Let's begin our discussion of production and technology by introducing factors of production. Everything that we use in the production process are called factors of production or inputs, and the good we produce is called the output. For example, we may convert iron ore and coal into iron in a furnace using some manual labor. The iron ore, the coal, the furnace and our labor are factors of production. We typically classify factors of production into four categories. Land is exactly what it sounds like, a particularly important factor in the production of, for example, crops. Next, we have labor. Most production processes, although certainly not all, require a certain amount of labor to complete. Physical objects such as machines, scissors, trucks, furnaces, and so on, that we use in the production process, but which are not converted into the output good, are collected into the category capital. Finally, the goods that are converted in our production process are called raw materials. Most of the concepts and results from production theory can be done using only two factors of production. We will therefore restrict attention to a two factors production model. In this model, x with the subscript 1 denotes the amount of factor 1 used in the production, and x subscript 2 is the amount that we use of factor 2. It is not important exactly which these factors are, they are arbitrary. However, it is common to use the convention that one of the factors is a bundle of all types of capital used in the production, and the corresponding x value is some appropriate measure of how much capital we use. The other factor is then a bundle of all types of labor. We generally assume that the production factors, even if they are bundles of production factors, are infinitely divisible and negative quantities are disallowed. The total amount of the output good is denoted by y. There is a given and known production function where y is a function of x1 and x2. The production function determines the amount of output we produce when we use x1 units of factor 1 and x2 units of factor 2. We have a single firm that needs to make two decisions. It needs to decide on y, how much to produce of the output good, and it needs to decide on which combination of the production factors x1 and x2 it should use to achieve this level of production. x1 and x2 must be selected such that f of x1, x2 is precisely y. No time in this model, so the model is best understood as a decision problem taking place at a single point in time. There are many similarities between the two factors production model and the two goods consumption model. In the two goods consumption model, we had a single consumer that had to decide on how much to consume of two goods. There was a utility function from which we could determine the level of utility from the consumption choice. The two factors production model is a very similar model where the goods are replaced by factors of production and the utility function is replaced by the production function. The foundation for the choice made by the consumer was to maximize utility given a budget. As we will see later on, the foundation for the choice made by the firm will be to maximize profit. The firm will select y, x1 and x2 in such a way that profit is maximized, but more on this later. Given a production function, y equal to f of x1, x2, there are typically many different combinations of x1 and x2 which will result in the same value y, the amount that will be produced by x1 and x2. Remember that a level curve of a function of two variables, x1 and x2, is the collection of all points, x1, x2, in the Cartesian coordinate system, such that the output of the function y takes the same value. We have one level curve for y equal to 5, one for y equal to 10, and so on. A level curve for a utility function was called an indifference curve. All consumption bundles on an indifference curve result in the same level of utility. A level curve for the production function is called an isoquant. The word isoquant is derived from iso, which means equal, and quant, which is just short for quantity. The quantity produced of the output good is the same for all factor bundles on an isoquant. Here is an example of a production function and an isoquant. In this example, the production function is given by y is equal to square root of x1 times x2. Here is a graph of the production function. 
an isoquant for y equal to 4 is then the collection of all combinations of x1 and x2 where the height of this graph is precisely 4. For example, the bundle 10, 1.6 belongs to this isoquant since the square root of 10 times 1.6 is precisely 4. There are of course many other factor bundles that belong to this particular isoquant. Here is a graph of all of them. Pick any point on this graph and the square root of x1 times x2 will be 4. If you understood the connection between the utility function and indifference curves, there is really nothing new here. Our production function plays the role of the utility function and the isoquants the role of the indifference curves. The isoquant in this example is the graph of a function x2 as a function of x1. As an exercise, see if you can figure out what this function is. We will get back to this issue later.